name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Christ is risen. This is the last Sunday for this year. We'll be exchanging that Paschal greeting as this Wednesday is the leave-taking of Pascha. And for these last several Sundays, we have been hearing the Gospels and meditating on those Gospel readings for the Sundays after Pascha, all of which are trying to help us understand who is this risen Christ. The most obvious answer is that he's the one who rose from the dead. He's the conqueror of death. And we heard the Gospels of Jesus first appearing to Thomas and then later to the myrrh-bearing women. And although that's the most obvious answer, I think it's the hardest one for us to accept. Imagine our lives if we fully and completely accepted the reality that Jesus Christ has conquered death and conquered it for us. So that's one answer, that he is the conqueror of death. On the Sunday of the paralytic, similar to today, we hear of Jesus as the healer. He's the one that brings fullness, wholeness. That's what health means, wholeness. As he healed that man from his paralysis and today gives sight to the blind. But today's healing is also related to the gospel last week that on the Sunday of the Samaritan woman, we learn that this risen Christ is not just the conqueror of death. He's not just a healer. He is the one who brings light. He brings light to the woman at the well in what was an absence of knowledge on her part, living her life with such ignorance that she searched for happiness five times in marriage and then a sixth time tried it again with another man to whom she wasn't married. But today we see Jesus as the one who brings physical light to the man born blind, but also in that beautiful gospel, we heard the entire chapter, the ninth chapter of John today, we see that this man becomes not just enlightened physically, but spiritually as well. And those who were supposedly the enlightened ones, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, they remain in the darkness of their ignorance. In the epistle we heard today, we heard another example of Christ as light. In fact, a light so bright that when it shone upon the Apostle Paul who related his conversion, it knocked him off his, ho- his horse. Such was the power of the vision of the light of Christ that the Apostle Paul saw when he first met him. There's another celebration today involving light. Today is the feast day of the equals to the Apostles Constantine and his mother Helena. We know through tradition that Helena was a very pious and faithful woman. But her son, for all of her attempts to bring him to the light of Christ, resisted. But as he later would tell the story, there was one day in which the light of Christ shone so clearly, it set him clearly on that path of belief in Christ. Constantine was one of several emperors at that point of the Roman Empire. And for lots of historical reasons I won't go into today, he found himself preparing for a battle the Battle of the Milvian Bridge, which is outside and going into the city of Rome. Constantine was, in one sense, outnumbered. And as the attacker going to a fortified city, it's a tough position to be in militarily. But he related later on that as he prepared for battle, he saw in the sky a light So bright was the light that he saw it shining above the sun. Imagine being able to see a light brighter than the sun. And the light was in the shape of a cross. And the first two letters in Latin 
of the name of Christ. And a voice was heard, in this sign you will conquer. Christ again, the light giver. So what about us? It's one thing to hear about the woman at the well, the man born blind, the Apostle Paul, or St. Constantine. Have we been enlightened is the question that we must wrestle with today. The easy answer is yes. You've come to church on a rainy morning. By the way, if you came late, you got more wet than those that came on time, but that's another story. <laughs> Had to mention that. Couldn't resist. As we began the liturgy, actually as we were finishing that, as we sang, in thy light shall we see light. So the obvious answer is yes, we've come here, you're here. But the other hard answer for us to face is that there's too much, too many instances, too much time in our lives, we have to say no. And how do we see this? We see this very clearly not that we're not walking in the light of Christ, or could, but when there's another light that shines, and it's much more comfortable to walk in that light. And that light is our own. Obviously not physically produced light, but if we think of what light does, light allows us to move. We can see what's going on. And by what we see, we make a plan. We make a strategy. Sometimes it's just to walk into a building. Sometimes it's a change in our business. Sometimes it's how we're going to do certain things as a family. The steps we take with each other in relationships. And we supply light. How do we know it's our light? The ideas are ours. The perspective is ours. The priorities are ours. And in those moments that we walk in our own light, it's unfortunate we cannot say to Christ, in thy light shall we see light. So what is the light of Christ? It's not just a mystical light that some have seen. It's the light that does what light always does. It's light that shows us the way. If we're in a particularly challenging situation, we might see the way through it. And if the way through it is about our priorities, our ways, our desires, then it's obviously our light. But there are so many situations where, even though that's the easy way to go, if we stop, we're going to see there's another way to go. The way appears to us. We can see it because it's revealed in light. Only it's not revealed in our light. How do we know that? It wouldn't be our way to do it. It wouldn't necessarily be our priorities. And so often it's not because of what we want. And when we choose to walk in those ways, then we know that we're walking in the light of someone other than us. How do we know it's the light of Christ? The light of Christ was the way of the cross. When Christ gave St. Constantine that vision in the sky, and in the symbol of the cross that in this sign conquered, he wasn't only speaking to Constantine. He was speaking to each and every one of us. If St. Constantine conquered in a military battle by the sign of the cross, how much more can we conquer the challenges that come to us in the same sign of the same cross? That was hard for St. Constantine. To give his allegiance to one he barely knew, whom he had resisted up until that point in his life in so many ways. And so we're going to find the same resistance in us. We're going to find ourselves afraid. Because the way of the cross does not protect ourselves. The way of the cross is always interested in the care of the other. 
the good will of the other, the good pleasure and good standing of the other. That's the way of the cross that shines to us in the light of Christ. We'll be tempted to do it our way, the safe way, the way that we know is right. And if you compare that attitude to today's gospel, guess who we sound like? The Pharisees. The ones who supposedly knew the teachings of God. They thought they were the enlightened ones. And yet here they were face to face with the healing of a man born blind. Why is that gospel so long? Because over and over again, they didn't want to see it. Catch the irony? They thought the man had been blind when they were still blind. And so are we when we want to walk our way and in our life. We think we're walking just fine. But we're walking in light that we produce that so often is not light at all. Today we are called and given the opportunity to have what that man born blind received. And that is the opening of our eyes. Walking by the light of Christ and not by our own light brings no guarantees that we're going to feel. But really, if we think about it, how many times have we trusted ourselves and fallen, stumbled? And how many times have we taken steps of faith? And every single time it worked. So it's, it's hard, but it's not as hard as we make it to be. The man who had been blind trusted in Jesus. Jesus asked him, do you believe in the Son of God? Listen to the faith of this man. Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? In other words, just tell me who he is. Whoever you tell me he is, I'll believe in that one. Imagine the faith. And Jesus says to him, He whom you see is the one. We have seen Christ. When we receive Holy Communion on a typical Sunday, we, we, we sing, We have seen what? The true light. We've seen it. It's nothing that is unfamiliar to us. The question now is will we choose it? Will we make the habit to choose that light? more often than we choose walking in our own. So you and I have the same invitation today. The world has placed mud on our eyes. And Jesus invites us, as he invited the man who had been born blind, to go and to wash. To go and to wash. It's washing that allows us to see. It's repentance. It's the cleansing from sin and our selfishness that allows us to see. That man who received his sight experienced unimaginable joy. My brothers and sisters, that's the joy that is waiting for us. Let's accept that invitation to have our eyes washed, to have our eyes opened, that we can truly say, in his light will we see light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen.